Welcome back friends. So since this is a new year, I thought we would do a comprehensive gel printing session. So I'm a little bit obsessed with gel printing. I will not lie. <laughs> Very obsessed with gel printing. So because of that obsession, I have learned a lot in the last two years. I will tell you, two years ago was like the first time I ever attempted gel printing. And I was using golden open paint and I was not very successful. But I didn't give up. So I kept trying different paints and I kept trying different tools. And eventually I learned some tricks along the way. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the types of tools that I recommend, the types of types of uh, layering techniques that you might not be aware of, when to let the paint dry, when to keep it wet, how long should you let the paper dry, you know, all of that. Techniques on rolling the paint on, because I think a lot of you are maybe going back and forth, back and forth, and you're rolling it on and then pulling it right back off. So anyway, let's let's take a look and let's just go through it step by step. So because this is going to be a long video, I put chapters down below. So if you do have some experience gel printing, just skip along to the section that maybe you think you need a little bit of refresher on. Okay, let's get to it. All right, so here I have a bunch of stuff that I want to show you. So if you're a beginner, I want you to see all the things that you need in, in, in addition to your plate. Now, I I'm not going to show you the plate just now. You'll see it in a minute. But um, I use all these different things, including rubber bands, twine, uh, you name it. I mean, there are these wood blocks I get on Amazon. Um, I've used these texture plates you get from Michaels that I think are in the... Um, pottery department. If you can't find them, ask them. I think they come in two colors, like gray and also this blue color. And they're usually different textures on both sides. And you get, I think, a pack of four. I also got this actually in the baking department. So this is supposed to be for candy. And I have this one and I also have a circle one. I think they're a lot of fun. Of course, the letter is backwards, but I think it comes out positive on the end. Um, but on the plate, it'll look backwards. <laughs> then, like this is a homemade stencil that I made um, on my Cricut. I have a Cricut Joy. So it's a like, long skinny one that I sometimes have to overlay with other stencils. This was a, something that was, I don't even know where I got this, but I cut this shape on this side and it just uh, allows me to get a grid pattern on the plate. So whatever is textured, you know, just what whatever you could find around the house, including, I'll show you this, cardboard. We all have lots of cardboard. So you have to remove, you know, the paper off of one side and then you have a nice texture. You can even cut into this and make a shape that would be great. Um, I haven't used this much and I kind of was looking at it and thought maybe I should use it today. So we're going to see. Okay. So these are stencils, right? And then this is called a mask. So it's hard to explain what the difference is, but the stencil is usually a sm much smaller pattern. Um, and so let's say this was your bottom layer. Your mask is masking what's underneath so that if you roll over a mask, then the part that the mask, the shape of the mask is going to show the smaller stencil going through. So we're, you'll, you'll kind of get the, the gist of it as I'm working. But anyway, some of these are from some of my um, sets of masks that I have on my website. This one I think is called Whirlwind. Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, Whirlwind something, and this one was uh, 
mystical something. I don't know. I'm very bad at that. These are circle, circle divide. That part I can remember, but I can't remember all of them. This is also the same part of this mask set. And this I don't have on my site yet. This will probably be a future release. Um, I'm still working on, I'm going to try to do a release of two every month. Um, anyway, so that is, th these are some of the tools that you need, but very important, you need good brayers. So I have, this one is from Speedball. It's a very high quality brayer, um, bigger, but this one's easier to clean. Um, I mean, they're both easy to clean when you're using the right stuff. I have a video um, that I will link below that shows you how to clean. Make it make your life easier. Um, but I like this small one a lot. I like them both, actually. This one has is better when you, after you brayer, you kind of have to flip it over so that it, and see, this one still wants to go back on the brayer. This actually has a little stand, see, so it doesn't stick to your paper. But you have to remember to do that. So I also have videos where I've used um, rubber bands and twine. So I'll, I'll link those below so that you can see um, how this is, the kind of results you get from this is very interesting. So of course you need paint and depending on where you live and how dry it is or how humid it is, the time to dry on the plate is a little bit longer. So you have to sort of experiment, see in your own environment, in your own room, you know, how long is that going to take? So these are my favorite paints. Most of you will notice that I mostly use golden fluid. I don't have patience to wait for paint to dry. This will dry nice and fast because it is very fluid. And the other two that I recommend are Liquitex Basics and Amsterdam. These both work really well on the plate. Okay, so here's my plate. Now you'll notice I store it between two pieces of copy paper. You'll notice that little oil stain. That is pulling the oils off the plate. Some people say this is a no-no. I think it makes my plate work better. I always do fresh paper every week or, or every, after every session, which is usually about once a week. And you'll see I haven't cleaned, but I'm not going to. We're just going to we're just going to go. I like that little bit of grunge that you get sometimes. Um, this is left over from my previous session. Okay, so another thing I like to work with is copy paper. So I'm going to show you the three different kinds of paper that I use the most. Copy paper. And I find that you want, you don't want anything that has like a, a coating on it. It just won't work. So the cheaper, the better, but try to get one that's white. But I bought one that said bright white once, didn't work that good. Okay, I just get this like at Office Depot. Now I like deli paper. It's nice and transparent. See how you could see that paint through it? It picks up the paint well. It's sturdier than tissue. And um, I use it to sometimes pick up layers when I'm looking for, I'm just trying to create a certain positive result on a plate, I pick up with this. Uh, and then I use it in collage. And the other one that I use is rice paper. And the rice paper is a little bit more transparent than the copy paper, you'll notice. Let's see how how different they are. Like you can't really see through that at all. Here you could see it slightly. This is a thinner paper. It's sized on one side. It's rough on the other. This is the side that we're going to print on. When 
when you are printing, you want a thin layer of paint. You don't want to put too much paint on the plate. So I'm going to demonstrate first with a little bit of this Liquitex Basic. And we're just going to put two little dollops. And you, there's also, you don't want to just roll back and forth because as you're rolling back, you're taking paint off the plate. So you always want to roll and lift, like going in one direction like that. You can go in the other direction as long as you lift. So I always start going in different directions until I get a nice even, and notice I'm lifting every single time. Okay, and then I always keep some copy paper off on the side to clean my brayer, flip my brayer over, and now I don't have to worry about my brayer sticking to the paint. Now, you might notice in other videos, <laughs> I sometimes forget to do that. Anyway, we're going to pick this up quickly. I'm just going to pick it up with some copy paper. Now you'll feel coolness and that's when the paint is still kind of wet and you'll feel it get a little bit less cool. Depends on the room you're in too. If you feel like that your paint, like you actually feel your paint through it, like there's little ridges or whatever, your paint was too much, way too much paint. And you will get a different result. So now that was a pretty even coat picked up some of the grunge that was left, did not pick up the grunge around the edges. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to mix two colors on the plate. Now this is Amsterdam. Azo yellow medium. The other one was light blue permanent. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of that. Now, mixing, there's different techniques. Some people like to just kind of go around like this, swirl. Now, because my brayer is so large, I was getting little ridges on the edge, but this is pretty good. Again, I might have put too much paint because I had three dollops instead of two. And depending on the consistency of your paint, you have to judge. And eventually you will figure it out just how much paint to put down. So it's also the size of your paint plate. It's the, you know, consistency, viscosity of your paint. Don't wait too long. You don't want this paint to dry on the plate before you put your paper down. There are other times when you do want it to dry, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, that feels good. So I got a it wasn't totally perfect, I, but I actually like it. Um, if I had spent a little bit more time and maybe, maybe used my smaller brayer, I would have gotten a more even tone, but that's very nice. Now, I really like it when it's blotchy, so let me show you what I normally do. I'm just going to put a bigger blob, a slightly smaller blob. I like the blobs, so I try not to mix it too much because I like the uneven unevenness. 
I like these blue blobs. Let's see how that one comes out. So my plate is an eight by 10, and this is obviously eight and a half by 11 paper. So this is kind of how I like my backgrounds to look, but it's all a matter of preference. These are the two that I mixed. Okay, so now I wanna talk about layering. Now there, obviously this is a couple of different stents. There's a stencil, there's a mask, and there's some texture going on here um, and here, different kinds of texture. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add different colors and we're gonna layer them on top of each other. And we're even gonna mask. Now there's two ways of doing this. There's a way of doing it with a single pull. So you lay a layer down, you let it dry. After it dries, you put on your second layer. After that dries, you put on a third layer, as many layers as you want. Then the final layer, you don't let it dry. And we're gonna demonstrate all of this, but first we're gonna start with the simplest one, which is layering one on top of the other. Now, there's something called registering. You'll notice here that my top layer, which was the white, did not register in the corner. It's off. So you can't see down here because it's white, but it's down here. Like it's all off by almost a half an inch. So to prevent that, you would do something called registering. Now, do you have to? You don't have to. It depends on whether or not you want your final print to be a perfect composition that you're then going to put in a frame. Like it's your final piece of artwork. There's another YouTuber. He has, uh, I think it's called Art Whisperer, it might be 88. I will put the um, link below. His channel is very interesting. He works on a large plate most of the time and he's doing finished compositions with single layers and they're registered. He's got a whole registration system. It's very complicated. I don't have anything like that. I don't have space for it either. Um, and most of my prints I'm going to be cutting up and putting into collage. So I am not making compositions. I could cut this out, mount it on a board, say it's a piece of artwork, I guess. Um, to me, that's, that's not how I work, but that might be how you want to work. So I would definitely look into registration. Now, there's a simpler registration with tape and you just need a roll of, this is like a painter's tape. I, I like the frog brand, it's called frog tape. I don't know if you could see that there, frog tape. And it doesn't, um, it sticks pretty good, but then it comes off the paper pretty easy. Okay, so we're gonna try to put another layer on top of this unregistered, and you'll see what the challenge is. Now this paper is not that much bigger than the plate, so I'm probably gonna get close. Um, but, but you'll see, I'm gonna put a darker color on top of this. All right, I'm gonna use the Payne's Gray. Um, I only have it in the golden fluid. So as you can see, it's a very different viscosity. Payne's gray is not gray at all, as you can see. Most artists are very well aware of this color. It is almost like a navy blue. Um, mixed with white, it makes a nice dusty gray blue color. 
All right, so now I'm going to show you just using texture. So we're going to just press down. Okay. Now I didn't press over here, so I didn't get it. See? And then I'm going to just I mix. I like to mix and match. You know, flip it around. I think the one behind here is very subtle, but it kind of gives you that um, sort of pebbly look. I'll be a little bit more careful on this one. Really press in. So now we're going to try to, while it's still wet, line this up. Now I'm going to take my corners and try to match it up here. Since I'm not taped down. A lot of times if I'm registering, I use my rice paper, which is slightly larger. It's like a 9 by 13 that gives me some extra room to tape on the edge. I will demonstrate that in the next segment. So if some of these things you're well aware of, if you're not a beginner beginner, and I am putting chapters down below so you could skip to the section that you would like to learn about. Okay, and I always take a peek. If it hasn't completely picked up, I leave it a little bit longer. Okay, let's, let's let this stay for a bit. So this is like very basic, what I'm showing you right now. And that's how you should probably start. I would also start with copy paper. It's the most affordable, you know, buy inexpensive paints like... Liquitex Basics and Amsterdam, they're, they're maybe a little bit more expensive than the craft paint, but easier to work with. If you're going to try to use craft paint like this, although I do use it sometimes, you need to know what you're doing. Okay, let's pull this up. So I did a pretty good job of registering, actually. It's a lot easier when the paper is not that much bigger than your plate. Now for collage paper, this is great. This is all you need. But I like playing with stencils, so let's try that next. I'm going to leave this because it's only going to add something a little extra. Okay, I'm going to use this... Um, primary magenta. And I'm going to try to stick with some single colors at first. When we get into more advanced stuff, I will show you how you can put more than one color without mixing. Oof, look at how beautiful that is. I love these two. Anyway, love these colors together. All right, now I'm going to throw a stencil down. I'm going to do a couple stencils. So I'm going to do this on this side, and this over here. We'll just not worry about that. Okay, this is when I like to use my deli paper because I could really get into all these little nooks and crannies. Look at how interesting that is. And this one, you paste it down on a collage, will be transparent. The paper will just kind of disappear. Okay. So I'm 
So I'm going to lay that over this color. Might not be dark enough. Let's see. Maybe I should have used black. Okay, so see, we picked up some of the Payne's Gray. We are a little crooked. Our registration was not as good this time. But this was a single layer over a basic background. And we got this added benefit of another paper. Okay, this is exactly what I was talking about. I did not flip it over, and my paper stuck right here. But... I got it off pretty good, so I usually get a clean sheet and keep brayering until I'm kind of clean. And then I just flip it over so I don't waste paper. Okay, so now we're going to try one where we're registered with tape. And we're going to do two papers at once. I'm going to use this uh, light blue permanent and a manganese blue as contrast and maybe a little bit of yellow because it will make green and we're going to use rice paper this time because it's a little bigger so i'm going to tape this one down over here And this one, I'm putting, like I said, the sized down. I'm doing it a little off, like it's just this much on this side and a wider one here. So I have room to tape. Unfortunately, I have, oh, let's see if I can get the camera to show you the whole thing. Okay, there we go. Close enough. All right. Okay. It's basically the same thing. We're still going to work with a solid color first. And we're going to go from light to dark. And we're going to use stencils with a ghost. So the ghost is going to be on the, on the right. And the um, uh, main print will be on the left. And I'm going to do both papers. Oops, put too much paint. Oh dear. This is the challenging part of having a small studio. I don't have a big enough table. Okay. That's another reason why I don't register that much. That was probably just a little too much paint. still feels very wet to me. Yeah. 
And this one picked up a lot of the residue from the previous stencil, which, like I said, doesn't bother me. I'm going to make sure it doesn't fall over like the last one. Okay, so we're going to put the same two colors down. So because that other sheet fell down before and landed over here, I have this that does not want to mix. But you know, sometimes these become happy accidents. So I'm just going to leave it. I like to go with the flow. Let the plate do what it wants to do. Okay, this one was a much thinner coat. So I could feel the difference with my hands. So the first time you're working, first couple of times you're working with a plate, really pay attention to how it feels with the different kinds of paper that you're using. How, can you almost feel the paint through the paper? Then you know you put too much. And you have to leave it longer because it, it's going to leave a lot of paint on the plate. My paper t tore a little bit. So that's the only thing you have to really watch for with rice paper is your paper could tear. Okay. So now so that you could really see the contrast, I think I'm going to use black. Okay. This is from Blick. Hopefully it'll work good. I'm going to lay down, I'm going to pick up from the left. So I'm going to lay this down on the right. And I'm going to go over it with this. I'm going to go through, through all those little openings in the stencil. To really make sure you get a nice clean imprint by really picking up all that paint inside there. Okay, so it's hard to see, but that's what we got. I don't want to unregister. Well, actually, maybe it doesn't matter. We will do a third layer just so you could see. But now we're left with the ghost. The ghost is going to get picked up with this side. And I will do, I don't know, what color should I do? I'm going to do another layer on top of this so you could really get the full, full demonstration. So I don't want to use, I want to use something contrasting a lot of times black would be the last layer that I would do, not the middle layer. Okay. 
And a lot of times I like the ghost better. Okay, and we still have some of this that will that we will still pick up. All right, so I might use this blue again because I think you know this went green enough that maybe this blue. Actually, if I mix it with a little bit of manganese. So now what we could do is do another stencil. So here's some more of my homemade Cricut stencils. It's not big enough, but I like sometimes to leave solid colors down the middle. Okay, we're going to do this again. We're going to keep this for the ghost. We're going to lay this down. Use your fingers to get into the holes. Really get around the edges to get a clean pickup. Fun. Lots of fun. You'll see. I'll show you when I unregister. Now we're picking up the ghost. And the ghost is a far more, I guess it's called a ghost because it's a lighter imprint. And a lot of times I'm designing for the ghost, intentionally going for the ghost. And so that's what I use my deli papers for. You'll, if you watch some of my videos, you'll watch me do that. I'll just use the deli paper just to leave the ghost behind. In this case, the ghost is not as nice. All right, let me show you. So that's the ghost. The ghost on top of the ghost. And of course, we could have swapped it too. I could have decided to put the ghost of the second layer on top of this one. But I really like the way this one came out. This is very nice. We've got real circles and then we've got ovals so i like that juxtaposition so we'll get them side by side so i hope i was clear on that hope that makes sense so now we are going to do layering with a single pull not sure how many layers I'm going to do. I'm just going to go for it. And this is when you're going to see strategically we are going to allow paint to dry on the plate. Okay, I'm going to start. So now this is the opposite. So you'll notice on this one we had we started with a um, greenish background. We layered black on top of that. So that was our second layer. Our third layer was blue. So, yeah, we did mix two colors on that first background, but that's still a single color, single layer. So this is a three layer, doing one layer at a time. And what is showing on top is our last layer. What we're going to do now is going to be the opposite. If we were doing this with a single pull, we would have had to lay the blue down first, then the black, and then the, we would have picked up with the green. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start with a Payne's Gray. We're going to do the darker color on top. So we have to start with that one. And I have a whole video about this technique that I will link below. It's one of my most popular videos. I still get lots of views on that one. And I appreciate everyone who's commented, liked and commented. 
helps me grow. Okay, so I'm going to put this here and this one on this side. I'm going to leave this. Uh, I'm going to do something in here, but with stamping. Okay, so I'm going to stamp in here. Try to just do it in the middle. Yeah, why not? We'll just go. So I want to show you that you can also stamp through stencils. And you can over, overlay stamps as well. Let's use that one on this side a little bit. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to let this dry like completely. It needs to be completely dry. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. I think we're dry. Looks like we are. So now I am going to mix some colors because when I do this technique, I like to I like to blend some colors right on the plate. So I'm going to put some magenta on this side, some yellow on this side, So I kind of, it's kind of like an ombre. Okay. Then I'm going to do a different stencil. I have no idea if this is going to be good or not. <laughs> I'm going to put this on this side now. And this time we're going to pick up while we're still wet, we're just going to pick up inside here. I'm going to do this kind of lightly, not as aggressively as I normally would. So see how we have, we've lost a lot of what was below, but I want you to see the pattern that we're getting. See? We're going to let that dry now. And the reason why I didn't do aggressively is I didn't want what was underneath the stencil to lift because the stencil could also lift the paint. So you, I didn't want to like rub, rub, rub like I normally would. Yeah, got some wetness right here. I just want to smooth that out a little bit. Anyway, but I also got this really interesting deli paper and this is why I use deli paper for these poles because yeah it would have been nice on white paper too but with this I have great collage paper that will that I can see through the end and I can just use little bits and bobs of this um, even even just the simple side over here makes interesting collage let's wait for this to dry be patient let it dry. Do not use a hot hair dryer on this. You will ruin your plate. So I've seen some people use their hair dryer, but they have it on a cool setting. Um, I, I don't want to risk it. So I just let, I just let it dry. I go get some water. I'm going to go drink some water. Okay. So now the decision of what color to pick this up with. So a lot of times you could try like, I wouldn't go too dark because this, this looks pretty dark. It's hard to see, but it's pretty dark. So I'm going to pick it up with Titan Buff or maybe even the Green Pale, Titan Green Pale. That might be very pretty.
the two for picking up my final are always <laughs> these two. But I've, I've done others. But these, I know, they always work. covers nicely. <clears throat> oh, my allergies are so bad. I can hardly talk. I don't know if you've been noticing that I'm having trouble speaking. Anyway. Let's pull this out a little bit. I want to take a little bit more off. Now this layer, we are not going to wait for it to dry. We are going to pick up like immediately. I'm using my rice paper. And I'm going to give this a, a good time to dry. Like maybe three minutes. But like I said, your environment might be different. You might need to wait longer. I want to get a really good pull, so I'm going to wait a little bit. And remember, you're pick your, picking up a couple of layers of paint here, so it's not as it's not as simple as when you're doing a single pull. Sometimes I think if I peek too soon, I might ruin that corner. So I'm really going to be patient. And I'm doing all of this in real time so that you could really see how long I wait. Sorry, I didn't, I turned the camera off for the drying time because, I don't know, three, four minutes is a little much for you to wait. Okay, I think this did it. I could feel the difference in the temperature on the paper. All right, let's pray. I lost some around the edges. That's because I have already had started out with a grungy plate. So you see all that texture from, from my texture plate? And my two layers of stencils. On this side, we lost a lot of it. Kind of interesting, huh? So that is how you do multiple layers with a single pull. So I'm just going to protect my plate, fresh copy paper, and put it away. Okay, so we've got a couple of interesting things here. This isn't exactly interesting, but pretty even, except for we've got some grunge. We picked up some grunge. Okay, let's not even show that. All right. Okay, so this was our two-layer without registration. Very simple. We did get this marvelous deli paper. Put some white behind it so you could see it. It's so, I, it's my favorite thing I think from today. Love the way that came out. I love this deli paper too. Very nice. So these were our positive and negative, I guess you would call it. This was the main print. This was the ghost. We actually pulled them like this. So, which do you prefer? Normally, I'm a ghost girl. <laughs> I'm not so sure I like I This one, I think, came out better. Anyway, not always. A lot of times I go for the ghost. 
And then, of course, we did our single pull. I think we did three layers plus the final tighten. I used green pale. It didn't come up looking very green. So um, I probably could have used the tighten buff instead. But I also could have used teal. Or I could have used, I could have tinted the, the tighten with a little bit of yellow maybe. To reintroduce that yellow that we, we lost a lot of the yellow. I mean the yellow is there but it, it went golden. So I could have used bright yellow to pick this up. That might have been nice. Um, I would do this again if I was like doing a full session. I would try to do this again and put the yellow in the back. So that's my process, how I work. I, if I'm not happy with the print, I'm not unhappy with this one, mind you. Um, but if I was looking for something very specific, I try again. Anyway, I'm also loving this, this subtle section right here. So we didn't talk about transparency at all. Notice how you can see through the colors. Part of that is the transparency of the paint. Let's see, golden does it like this. You can see that shows you how transparent that yellow is. This shows you how opaque that color is. On this paint, they have it here, opaque. Now, I was using this paint for this, I think. No, I'm pretty sure. But I rolled it very thinly, and so we still see through it. And it's I love this little subtlety that we have here. Um, I'm going to want to use that in a collage for sure. We always need high contrast papers in collage, and we need subtle. So thanks for stopping by today. I hope this gets you obsessed with gel printing. I'm obsessed with it. I absolutely, I look forward to the days when all I'm going to be doing is gel printing. They are my most fun days. And then I always have surprise things like this. That's my roll off sheet. How exciting is that? I will use this in collage. This, this section here, this section here. I mean, I love it. Part of it is the mix of colors and also how the colors changed when I was rolling. But anyway, this is what my obsession is. Um, anyway, leave me a comment below if this helped you in any way. I love hearing that, um, that I helped in some way. I just hope that this, if it helps just two people, I'm happy. Anyway, so thanks for stopping by. Um, don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.